Hello guys, Frederick Kuti here, operating as Unity Game Dev over at Patreon. Today we'll be discussing hardware and operating system choices for your Unity Game Development Studio. And we're benchmarking a brand new $350 Acer against my trusty old 2013 MacBook Pro, which originally cost me $3,400. As always, I have a very detailed blog, uh, so you can uh, check that out on the links below. Let's do this. So what are the minimum hardware requirements for running Unity on your computer? The folks over at Unity Technologies do not specify any hardware requirements, but they do state that you need a GPU that can handle DirectX 9 plus a shader model 2.0 capabilities. They also go on to state that anything made since 2004 should work. That's good news for all of us. You don't need a dedicated graphics card or some fancy machine to get into Unity game development. So why am I doing this video? Well, I remember when I was originally getting into Unity game development and I was looking for a good laptop to start developing with. I just wanted to make characters move on screen, but now I have to also deal with uh, what kind of laptop should I get? Should it be Mac OS versus Windows? If you're a newbie or looking to make a laptop change, then I think you'll find some useful discussion points in this video. They might say, Fred, these computers are at the opposite end of the spectrum. How can you compare them? Uh, well, I wanted to show people how relatively inexpensive it is to get into Unity game development uh, with something like an Acer laptop. Um, but I also wanted to have a discussion regarding hardware choices, especially memory, uh, spinning versus solid state hard drives, and of course the infamous Mac OS versus Windows discussion. I will also introduce the notion of purchasing refurbished Macs so you can start deploying to iOS at a less expensive entry point. So onto the benchmarks, followed by discussion on hardware and software. Here you can see my MacBook Pro on the left and the Acer on the right. Don't they look so happy together? In this test, I simply launched Unity on both machines and then ran the standard assets racing example found in Unity version 2017.2.0 F3. You can see the MacBook load stuff a little faster, but the Acer is keeping up just fine. When running just Unity alone, the Acer fared better than I expected. I start seeing huge slowdowns though when running Unity, plus syncing Dropbox, plus running other software. You have to remember my MacBook has 16 gigs of memory and my Acer has only 4 gigs. Also, the solid side hard drive on the MacBook Pro makes a huge difference in the overall speed on my Mac. You can potentially upgrade your Acer to 8 or 16 gigs of RAM and get a 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive and you'll see huge performance gains. All of this could be done for around $300 extra, but instead of doing that, just purchase the next level up Acer that I mentioned on the blog associated with this video. For the next benchmark, I wanted to test out the WebGL capabilities. I found a nice test that the guys use over at Unity to benchmark new Unity rollouts to different platforms. On this benchmark, you can see the MacBook Pro getting almost double the points the Acer got, even though it is 4 years old. This has a lot to do with the extra 12 gigs of RAM I have on the MacBook Pro. Plus, my MacBook Pro has a second dedicated graphics card with 1 gigs of RAM. It simply can handle higher levels of AI, graphics, shading, etc due to a dedicated GPU that is optimized for matrix algebra and other math related to 2D and 3D manipulations. So if you're planning to build some heavy 3D games, invest some more money and get a laptop with a dedicated graphics card with at least 1 gigs of RAM.
So let's talk a little bit about macOS versus Windows. A pet peeve of mine is seeing a slowdown around the second week of running a brand new $2,000 Windows machine. After I've loaded all my antivirus, malware, and software, why does it slow down so much? Why is the MacBook Pro still running the same super fast speed as the day I bought it? Now, I have to say with the advent of solid-state hard drives, we're seeing these changes a little bit less and less. But you're still losing a lot of CPU and I.O. processing uh, to system software on the Windows platform. Well, for one, you can actually get away with not running any malware or antivirus on your Mac. I actually don't recommend this, but you get away with it. Why is this? So there are, few, there are fewer people browsing the web with Macs than people with PCs. So it's just simply not worth the time for hackers to target this community. Antivirus programs are very heavy CPU and I.O. intensive, so not having those programs on your Mac can make a huge difference. There is something known as DLL HAL that exists in Windows. Due to all the various versions and backwards compatibility for APIs, there are many holes that can be exploded by virus programmers and hackers in Windows. The Mac OS has its roots in the super secure Linux and Unix operating systems. Um, and it has a less tangled architecture, allowing for a more secure environment. Secondly, Windows has something called a registry that is used to register various properties of programs. As you add programs to Windows, the registry grows, and you have more items to index and read when a program is requested to be open. This can cause slowdowns over time. So, in general, I've seen that Mac OS can focus more resources on the program that is being run and it has lower overhead compared to Windows. The most important point to choosing a Mac over a PC is that you'll have the ability to deploy to iOS. There is simply no other way around it. To deploy to iOS, you need Xcode, and Xcode only run on Mac OS. So if you're in the mobile space and you want to make money from your games, you should definitely deploy to iOS because you are way more likely to make money on the iOS or App Store than on the Android on uh, Google Play. Let me give you a personal example. With my 3D game Animal Rampage, I've had months where I clocked a thousand dollars a month for my iOS version. Usually it takes around, usually I make around four hundred dollars from it, but I plug a thousand dollars. On Google Play, the most I've made is about twenty dollars a month. Why is this? Well, it comes down to the trust customers have in the App Store and the willingness of iPhone users to dish out money for quality like they do for one thousand dollar iPhones. It takes me around 7 to 11 days to push an app through the iTunes Connect submission process, but only about 24 hours to get it live on Google Play. The good folks at Apple take their time to check for viruses, malicious code, copyright infringements, and overall quality of your Apple game. The end result is a much healthier iOS app ecosystem that end users are willing to spend money on. So if you say, Fred, well, you know, I need to use 3D Studio Max. This only runs on PC. Well, you can actually set up a dual boot configuration on Mac OS, where you can boot into Mac OS or into Windows. Uh, I actually do that myself, and I find that Windows runs better on my, my 2030 MacBook Pro than, uh, you know, some of these $2,000 um, new PCs that I run at my job. MacBooks are expensive. This is very true. But you could purchase a refurbished MacBook Pro and get 15 to 40 percent savings. These machines often get brand new hard drives and other components installed and are tested extensively prior to being sold back into the market by Apple. You could also purchase the recommended service plan for extra peace of mind. Uh, goes this route if you need a MacBook Pro but you simply can't afford to purchase a new one. Uh, check out my associated blog for links to the refurbished Mac site. I hope this video has helped you make up your mind regarding some important purchasing decisions. Uh, please come check me out over at Patreon slash Unity Game Dev for other cool Unity Game Dev tutorials. And please keep on developing those awesome games.